What's going on guys, it's Murder Inc here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're going to be talking about three of the Rebalance Champions, actually throw them into an arena team together, see what their synergy is like, it actually ended up being pretty decent. So I want to talk to you about Elder Skarg, Abess, as well as Bystovis. First champion we're going to talk about is Elder Skarg. I've used him already. His role is kind of going to stay the same. One interesting thing you could look into if you wanted to, although I probably wouldn't recommend it, is the clan boss. Now he has that opportunity to hit three times with the A2 on a three turn cooldown, but also place three extra hits. As we all know, with extra hit, you can place War Master on each hit. So there's a ton of potential for a lot of damage there. As far as the other debuffs, it doesn't really have good synergy we get a decreased speed which doesn't matter increased defense which is always nice but you're probably going to have that anyways the real problem is going to be that a1 placing an increased speed on this champion pretty much messing up all of the speed tunes and this passive really shines with legendaries so the fact that you're going to be using him in content where he's not going to get any use out of his passive definitely lowers the value of him being used outside of a place like Faction Wars or Arena where you actually get that opportunity to face other legendary champions, making sure this passive is actually working. Now as far as the passive change itself, it wasn't as big as I initially anticipated. The multiplier for the damage that is inflicted upon other legendaries cannot be affected by critical rate, crit damage, or ignore defense like champions in the past have been able to. I'm kind of glad they did this because if they didn't, other players would have been one-shotting themselves when trying to attack Elder Skarg. Now one of the greatest additions to Elder Skarg's kit is in fact in this A3 here, where he also places a Provoke debuff on a Legendary Champion for one turn on top of the Fear. So what this means is everything's pretty much going to stay the same as far as how you use them in Arena. Now they did also add the fact that you can also get an HP burn and a true fear. The main thing we're going to focus on is this A3 here. We're going to build him as fast as possible so he is going second in the arena team, applying that fear and that provoke on legendary champions which is going to prove to be extremely strong. Next champion we have on our list is actually a best. She did a lot of damage before. I did a champion spotlight on this champion a long time ago and she hits really hard. What they changed with this patch is what she should have had coming into it. 100% chance once booked on all enemies to apply that decreased defense. So pretty much we're getting a defense down AOE from a Force Affinity Champion instead of having to rely on War Maiden all the time, which is definitely a great step forward as far as consistency goes. As far as the change to the A3, I was rather disappointed on how they went forward with this. Deals extra crit damage if the attack is highest, ignores 30% defense if the target's defense is highest. Now, this is really good if you want to build zero stats on Nuker and strictly speed if you're in the mid game or under level. However, if you're already in gold arena pushing for the top of gold, you're going to want to invest in the stats on this champion and forget about the 30% extra crit damage as far as banking on their enemies having higher attack because sometimes the team compositions other people are running they're going to be under geared or they're going to have strict synergy where no one's running high attack which pretty much defeats the purpose of this it is nice how it ignores 30 percent of the target's defense if their defense is highest you wouldn't normally stack defense on a best so this is pretty much guaranteed to always have with that small reminder to never stack defense on a champion like a best so overall she pretty much stayed the same as far as her role goes. In dungeons and in other places like that, she'll definitely shine a lot more with the fact that she can now place decreased defense on everyone with the 100% chance once she is booked, assuming you have the proper accuracy for whatever content you're doing. Now the last champion we're going to talk about is in fact by Stophus. We have that true fear application to the A1. We have the A2 that stayed the same, but now the A3 actually makes sense. So very good job Plarium. Attacks all enemies, has a 50% chance of placing block cooldowns as well as decreased defense on all enemies. This only goes up to a 75% chance total. However, you can kind of use this champion just like Elder Skarg. Now that this does in fact hit all champions, this champion in particular, his base attack is extremely high. So all you really need is crit rate, maybe a crit damage necklace, and you will do perfectly fine in the arena. All right, let's take a look at the arena now. Preferably, let's look for a team with all legendaries so we can get that bonus from Elder Skarg. 
We'll try with this team here first. Obviously, three red affinity champions against three blue affinity. We're in a good spot. However, they do have two turn meter boosters. So we're going to be hoping that either our Arbiter is faster and we don't get cut off with our Elder Scar going second, or we'll kind of just see how this plays out. Let's head straight into this battle and hope for the best. Okay, we did get the turn meter boost first. Now we're going to use this A3 here, try to fear and provoke every single enemy, which we did. This just goes to show how strong this champion can be. If you simply build maybe crit rate gloves in as much speed as possible, kind of taking the role of that second turn meter booster. Now we're going to use the block cooldown and decrease defense on everyone. As mentioned before, you want to build them fast, accuracy with just crit rate and his base attack will do the rest. Now we're going to use the A3 and try to go for the cleanup here and perfect. As we can see, a best hits hard as mentioned before. A best always hit this hard so there wasn't a huge change to how hard she hits. Obviously ignoring defense is going to help, but if you're one-shotting someone by doing 80,000 damage, or 120,000 damage, it really doesn't matter since it's a one shot either way. Now that we saw that first team, let's go against the second team and see if we can actually pull this off against a double turn meter booster, or how annoying this in fact is going to be. Okay, so we end up cutting them off with the Elder Skarg, which is why it's important to really speed tune your arena teams and make sure everything is perfect. So we do have the provoke on everyone, which is absolutely huge. As we can see, Arbiter going again there. We had the fear pop on Sifi, which was huge. Now let's go for this block cooldown skills and decrease defense. Okay, so Rodos win, the nerfed Rodos, by the way, he almost just one shot our Arbiter with one hit. Now let's use this A3 ability, see if we can kill everyone but Rodos, throw this on auto. And once again, dealing less damage two legendaries he almost one shot elder skarg as well with that a2 though yes rotos was nerfed i'll do a separate video on that it's not as big of a deal as people are making it out to be since he can still punish your team if you don't respect his passive and how much damage he still can do now let's even out the playing field a little bit we're going against a team with red affinity champions and not simply blue affinity champions so we're going to make it a little bit more difficult for ourselves so let's see how this team actually can stand up against our three rebalanced champions here so Elder Scar once again going second, which is awesome to see. I cannot get over how strong the Provoke addition to this skill was. While he was good before, this just kind of increased him to that next level. Because while Fear has a chance of not actually working against the champion, preventing them from getting a skill, there's no arguing what Provoke can do. And we did get resisted there, which is unfortunate, but still, it's very strong nonetheless. Now we have Abess going next, and she is going to completely clean up that team. The only thing to worry about with Elder Skarg is his kit is only applied to legendaries, so this is kind of punishing. I don't want to say whales, but people who use full legendary teams. Now let's go against a epic variation of a blender, see how we can do if they counterattack too many times, or if they go first, we could be in trouble. Okay, so we're going to get the fear on. We are going to get a counterattack. Thankfully, they didn't counterattack, which was very strong. So Duchess is going to, or Arbiter, excuse me, is going to get one turn. So let's see how this plays out. Are we going to get one shot? Or is this going to work out for the better? And for some reason, it looks like Elder Skarg isn't using his A2 ability. Let me just confirm that really quick. We use the A1 here, hopefully we don't kill her. Okay, we didn't. Yeah, for some reason he wasn't using his A2 on auto. I know there have been some concerning AI changes already. And I know a few of them. I wasn't aware that he wasn't using his A2 on auto. So that could be a huge issue for Elder Scar users if you do want to use him in the arena. Because that's a very strong skill, especially against the Skull Crown. If you're fast enough to go second, have that fear stop the enemy team. Skullcrown places her on killable buff. You can actually use that A2 to steal the unkillable buff and kill that Skullcrown, reducing the risk of your team actually losing a battle like that. So now let's take a whirl at this in the Dragon 20 dungeon. Do a quick damage test to kind of see where these legendaries are sitting damage wise with their arena gear. Since it is utility based and I do want to see kind of what this AI has to offer. 
as we saw we have the A3 used first, so he did end up using that A2 as far as Elder Scar goes, which is interesting. Maybe I just missed it the first time, I'm not too sure about that. We have that really strong decreased defense there. And I thought this surplus was actually removed from Draco, I'm not sure why he's still doing it. Maybe I just read the tooltip wrong. No, 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 I guess he can't crit, that sounds correct. So overall, I mean, we have a lot of damage being done here. Granted, only Abess is really dealt for damage. The rest are built for speed and accuracy. So there is that kind of drawback to keep in mind if you are going to judge this for face value. And also, we have Elder Scar using that A3 against the dragon, which probably isn't the most beneficial thing to do. So the one small side to Elder Scar so far would be the fact that he does that against bosses. Over, overall, it's not a huge deal because we're still getting the damage from this champion. 31,000 A1, 52,000 A1. Let's see what our Bystophus does. Okay, he's not going to get a turn. That's unfortunate. 70,000. So overall, for champions whose role is utility and damage instead of just damage, Bystophus and Elder Skarg, if you have them, if you're progressing, they can actually be a huge help to your team. So I'm definitely happy with these changes. As mentioned, some of them are geared towards the mid game and lower. As far as Elder Scar goes, I would definitely say the change for him is definitely scaled more towards the end game player base since you can focus strictly on speed. However, with that in mind, Elder Scar can also be a huge benefit to pretty much the entire player base if you do have this champion. The fact that it takes the burden off of you having to build accuracy is probably the biggest thing that could be in anyone's kit, especially early on when players are farming the spider for that accuracy banner. So the fact that you can just throw on any banner you want, get that fear. I would expect to see much more Elder Scargs get out of that vault and get into the arena and really start causing some problems, especially in 3v3. Maybe you've really been looking for that missing link in your 3v3 team. And honestly, Elder Scargs probably that based on how good his kit is and his multipliers even if you don't get the opportunity to go first in an arena battle. Now that I went over that, let me show you how I actually geared these champions. We have an Accuracy, Speed, and Cruel Set and Elder Skarg. 4.1 thousand defense, 275 speed, so as mentioned, lots of speed. I do have accuracy just because I was testing out that A2, seeing if it was worth it. Keep that crit rate there because that's going to be important especially for doing just a little bit of damage since fear is a very annoying buff. As far as mastery goes, I just went with damage masteries. This is probably going to be fine. If you want to go more on the tanky side, you can definitely run the defense and the support tree for this champion since his main goal isn't going to be dealing damage. As far as a best goes, this is really where the damage comes in. We have 5.7 thousand attack. As I mentioned before, it's pretty easy stacking attack on her with 1.5 thousand base attack. So unless you're in the early stages of the game and you have a best, I would not recommend going very low on attack just to get that extra 30% crit damage because as we all know, you need a solid balance of attack and crit damage to actually do damage to your opponent. And if you're too low on one, it's not going to work out and do a lot of damage for you in the end. So as we can see here, 208 speed, 290 crit damage. No accuracy because we're not worried about defense down on a nuker like a Bess. And as far as gear goes, we have three cruel sets. Mastery, she's also using crit damage. I don't have her masteries finished, but ideally I would probably run her in the offense and defense tree instead of the support tree, unless I'm planning on using her for dungeons and that defense down. Now the final champion we do have here is Bystophus in a full speed set, really focusing on speed accuracy and once again, 100% crit rate and 4.2 thousand attack. I'm pretty sure Bystophus has the highest base attack in the game. This is another champion that's really easy to build outside of his rather concerning base speed of 94. Masteries for this guy, ideally I wouldn't be running Helm Smasher. I would really go the support tree as well as the offense tree and aim for that eagle eye giving me additional accuracy. But based on Bystophus kit, masteries aren't going to play a huge role in it unless you're really struggling to hit those base stats. Those are the three champions. That's the gear that I used on them. Let me know what you guys think. Were these changes big enough for you to bring them out of your vault? Start looking at them. Consider them for the upcoming content of Void Tower. 
3v3, definitely let me know. I do have some plans to review other champions, but I do want to get your guys' feedback on which champion specifically you would like. I really enjoyed keeping this to three champions, not only because I could use them in arena, but because I think three champions is definitely the best amount for one video instead of just making three different videos that are going to be way too long and boring about each champion. So if you want, leave a comment, give me the next three champions you guys want to see. I'll make a video on it and I'll see if I can find the best places and the best uses for all of the champions you guys are suggesting. As always guys, thanks a bunch for watching this video. If you enjoy this content, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss that next video and I will see you all in my next upload.